Belkota Southwest, British Nigeria, is a land where heroes are born. His divine birthmark, the new beginning of a united people, a new nation, and development. The pathway to civilization, the conqueror and progressive unit of his predecessor. He was called Ulushegun Okikiola Aremu Obasanjo. The meaning of his first name is the Lord is victorious. Born to Amos Adigun Obasanjo Pankole, his father, and Ashabi, his mother. He spent his early years with his parents in Ibogun Laogun, assisting them at their farm. Little wonder he developed a passion for agriculture and would go on to become one of their most ardent supporters of self-sustaining agricultural policy. With the aspiration of becoming ultimate achiever without giving up, he had to make a decision of having the father tell him he had to either stop school or work while schooling. He stayed back and worked after school to earn his upkeep, a meritorious young man. In 1948, General Obasanjo enrolled into the St. David Ebenezer School at Ibogun for his primary school education. From 1952 to 1957, he attended Baptist Boys High School, BBHS Abelkota, for his secondary school education. In 1958, General Ulushegun Obasanjo joined the Nigerian army. Some of his studies and training include Mon Cadet School, Aldershot, England, Royal College of Military Engineers, Chatham, England, School of Survey, Newbury, England, Indian Army School of Engineering, Pune, and Royal College of Defense Studies, London. General Obasanjo served in the 5th Battalion of the Nigerian Army in Kaduna and in Cameroon between 1958 and 1959. He was commissioned 2nd Lieutenant in the Nigerian Army in 1959 and promoted a Lieutenant in 1960. At the rank of Lieutenant, General Obasanjo served in the Nigerian contingent of the United Nations Force in Congo, formerly Zaire, now Democratic Republic of Congo, in 1960. He later joined the then only engineering unit of the Nigerian army and became its unit commander in 1963. In 1963, General Obasanjo was promoted to the rank of captain in the Nigerian army. He was attached to the Indian Army Engineering School at Kirky, India in 1965. That year, he was promoted to the rank of major. To depict a man, one must understand him. To understand him, one must be like him. To portray his psychological activities, one must be able to reproduce them in oneself. To understand a man, one must have his nature in oneself. A Nigerian of Yoruba descent, General Ulushegun Obasanjo served once as a head of state and ran two terms as a civilian president. General Ulushegun Obasanjo was suddenly, albeit reluctantly, thrust into the role of leadership as the head of state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and her military forces. At 38 odd years, the young general is faced with the task of keeping the peace, saving a faltering economy, and charting a direction for a young, fractured nation. Well, the Nigerian Civil War, as I have said on many occasions, is one war too many that I have fought in my life and I do hope and pray that there will never be a second civil war in Nigeria. You know the problem of a civil war is this, you are fighting to unite. Normally you fight war because you are bitter enemies, but here you are fighting to bring brothers and sisters back into the fold. So how much is too much and how much is less so that you do not lose the war? It is a very, very difficult thing to do. Um, we manage to uh, win the war. We nearly lost the war. I mean the federal side. And uh, we manage on uh, the slogan of no victor, no vanquished. 
and we prove that. And um, that, to me, is the greatest, uh, one of the greatest achievements of Nigeria, that we were able to fight for our unity. And at the end of it, we were also able to heal the wound that occurred as a result of that war. During his time in office, General Obasanjo proved to be a tough leader, unafraid to stand up to colonial powers. Nigeria considered itself a frontline state during the struggle for apartheid as a result of Britain's role in the liberation struggle for South Africa and Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe. This seems not to have been in consonance with the ideals of the struggle and consequently Nigeria had to nationalize British petroleum. General Obasanjo served as the Army General of Nigeria and as a military ruler remained the head of state from February 1976 to October 1979. The general played an instrumental role in bringing back democracy in the country, thus mending the tarnished image of the nation. While he was in prison, there were many attempts to assassinate him, which all yielded vain results. Chief Olusegun Obasanjo was accused of being involved in a phantom coup against General Sani Abacha's government. He was subsequently tried and sentenced to 30 years in prison. However, after three years, three months, and three days, General Olusegun Obasanjo was released from prison by the government of General Abdul Salam Abubakar. Congratulations, sir. How do you feel today, sir? I feel fine. I feel fine, sir. I've always felt. I feel fine. It's nice to be back at home. Anybody knows that. So I feel fine. I have the experience of uh, <coughs> uh, being, uh, a doctor being sent to me to uh, inject me with uh, virus, uh, which is what they did to um, Sheo Yaradwa. Uh, but God saved me from that because I refused, not because of my wisdom. I think it was the, um, uh, the, 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 the good will of God and the mercy of God on me. During this period in prison, he had a spiritual rebirth and became a Christian without doubt. One very important experience I will not forget in Yola prison was the day uh, there was heavy rain and two sides of the four walls, four sided walls of Yola prison fell and um, the prisoners came to me and said, look, let us get out of here. Uh, they will protect me and uh, maximum three or four or five of them will be killed. But we will all get out. And I said, no, not on your life. If all the walls of the prison fell, we will all stand under the tree in the prison. And we will obey the prison rules and regulation. And they obeyed me, and that's what we did. That was a very unforgettable experience for me. Then another unforgettable experience that the boys that I talk to in the prison and who change their mind and become, uh, uh, they change and change their life. One of them is uh, uh, Babali, uh, who is now a pastor. He used to be the head of arm robbers in the north. Um, these are some of the experiences that I, I will not forget. Having retired from the armed forces as a general in 1979, Chief Obasanjo started a company called Obasanjo Farms Nigeria Limited in Ota, Ogun State. He supervised the construction of the farm closely, often choosing to spend the night in the half-built structures. Chief Obasanjo became a fellow at the University of Ibadan's Institute of African Studies. During the 1980s and 1990s, 
He wrote prolifically, publishing one of his renowned books, My Command, and numerous other books and articles on African development. He served on a variety of policy research and advisory committees concerned with the future of African countries, democracy, and farming. Quote, the improvement of living standards and the wealth of nations are more of a journey and less of a destination. End quote. A renowned statement by Chief Ulushegun Obasanjo. Obasanjo has played a pivotal role in the regeneration and repositioning of the African Union, including helping to establish the new partnership for Africa's development in Nepal and the African Peer Review Mechanism, APRM, which is designed to promote democracy and good governance. He has consistently supported the deepening and widening of regional cooperation through the Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS and the Co-Prosperity Alliance Zone incorporating Bene, Ghana, Nigeria and Togo. One of the uh, uh, problems of ECOWAS is the Anglophone Francophone. The Francophone have Umoa, which, is, uh, which have brought all the Francophone together under one central bank, one currency. And uh, we have not been able to bring ourselves together under one currency. We have an ECOWAS uh, bank, we have an ECOWAS fund, but uh, we have a ECOWAS passport, but we haven't got a ECOWAS currency. And if you are going to have a common market, you cannot have a common market with different currencies. It's like if you go to any local market and you have to transact business in Naira, in CD, in uh, uh, CFR, it will, be conf it will be confusion. So we need to make sure that we move on as fast as possible. And we must develop, develop two tracks. Those who want to move on the fast track, let them go on. And then the others can come up. But we have to do more than we are doing. Uh, instead of one country in ECOWAS using, allowing itself to be a dumping ground, and uh, then the, the, the goods that are dumped from, one, from outside ECOWAS are then brought to our country through an ECOWAS country that has been used as a dumping ground. We have to stop that. He has served as chairman of the Group of 77, chairman of the Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting, and chairman of the Nepal Heads of States and Government Implementation Committee. Chief Obasanjo has also been involved in international mediation efforts in Angola, Burundi, Namibia, Mozambique, and South Africa. In 2008, the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon appointed Chief Obasanjo as his special envoy to the Great Lakes region, where he has played an integral part in mediation efforts in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. An illustrious career in public service has been adorned at numerous times with accolades and achievements for the general. Exponential infrastructure development and expansion of agricultural and educational programs were hallmarks of this era. While the jury is out on which may be termed as most important, the impact of two such events cements Baba's place in the annals of African history as a hero. Baba has achieved so much and remained crucially relevant over the decades as Nigeria emerged from various dark splotches of her history into the light. In times of her identity crisis, economic depression, frosty international relationships, and budding terrorism, the general has steered the ship, plotted the course, and sailed full speed ahead. Dissuading the army from further political involvement, redirecting its efforts, and exhibiting exceptional gamesmanship, this servant, leader, icon, and exemplary man has ignored tribe and creed and traditional conflicts, birthing a new democracy that has endured till this date. He is difficult to persuade, but he is a progressive man. It is our prayer that Baba enjoys many more years of excellent health and our leaders 
both current and future. Borrow a leaf from this tree of service, this study bone of grace.